Well, welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. So today I want to talk about six CGC 9.8 comic books I was wrong about. Yeah, and I think with these books, they fall into sort of two categories. One where I recommended them, but the prices went down. <laughs> yeah, and uh, others where I passed on them, but the prices went up. So, you know, certainly on the channel here, we've had our share of successes and, and good CGC 9.8 recommendations. But uh, definitely worthwhile to just uh, think about and learn from my mistakes, certainly. And that's what we'll uh, attempt to do on the video here. So uh, six CGC 9.8 comic books that I was wrong about. Let's get right into it here. The first one is a really cool modern and uh, maybe not my favorite though, but it's a uh, Young Avengers number one. And I certainly say I was wrong about this one because the prices have done pretty well here in the last six to 12 months, let's call it for a Young Avengers number one in the CGC 9.8. I do gotta say, like, pretty great cover. So, you know, if you're just, like, nostalgic for this one, I could totally, you know, understand wanting this one. But uh, for Young Avengers number one, there is another 9.8 I kind of prefer. But, you know, a few things with Young Avengers, I just think, you know, because Avengers is such a big thing with MCU and, and the Disney movies and things like that, I don't really think they're gonna, you know, taint that brand in any way by bringing in Young Avengers. In, so I don't really think there's much potential for like, you know, Young Avengers to get into a movie or something like that. So that's a bit of a negative. And just, you know, Young Avengers, I think I'm not the biggest fan of these, uh, you know, there's Avengers and then there's like Young Avengers and there's like Dark Avengers and, you know, they're nothing new. It's not really that creative, I think. like just to have Dark Avengers and Young Avengers. So those are the kind of the two negatives I would say, uh, you know, for the book specifically. But as well, there's just another book that really comes to mind that I really prefer in the CGC 9.8. We'll, we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, Young Avengers number one. On the census too, not looking the best, to be honest. So uh, there's 1,011 CGC 9.8. So it's popular, there's a lot out there. Uh, certainly one of 1,000, just over 1,000 in the 9.8 blue label. 59.4% the CGC 9.8 ratio. So of all graded copies, 59.4% of them are CGC 9.8s. And that's not anything to write home about, like no reason to pay up for this book. It's not really rare in the 9.8 with 59.4% uh, of them being CGC 9.8s. So I mentioned there, you know, Young Avengers number one, certainly, you know, if you, depending on what angle you're coming at it, it could be a good or a bad book maybe. But um, another one I really uh, have recommended over this one is uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number one from 2008. Yeah, it's kind of the first full appearance of the new Guardians of the Galaxy. And in the 9.8, there's like 170 of these or something like that. I forget the exact. And the 9.8 ratio is like 22% or 23%, I think it was. So much more rare in the 9.8 uh, and so interesting when you consider the price because Young Avengers, having a look in the last month, like auctions in the 9.8, about 340 to 380. Uh, I think maybe one was maybe like around 325. So, you know, maybe you might be able to get this one closer to 300, but 350 probably about the fair value right now for Young Avengers number one in the CGC 9.8. Whereas Guardians of the Galaxy number one, a much more rare book in the 9.8, just as cool, I think. Uh, Gold Clack has a fair market value at like just over $200. So this one, there's not a lot out there and I think they're pretty tightly held by collectors. So you don't really see too many of these pop up, but um, if you can get this for less than a Young Avengers number one in the CGC 9.8, a uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number one uh, from 2008 in the CGC 9.8, I think that's, that's a much better buy than Young Avengers number one. So I was definitely wrong about Young Avengers number one because in the last year here, I've, you know, def I've been recommending the Guardians of the Galaxy book and uh, Young Avengers then was about 200 to 250, 250 for sure. So it's gone up to 350. So, you know, definitely a, a decent price appreciation. Although all, most big 9.8 keys have done pretty good in the last six to 12 months. But still, um, you know, I'm surprised the Guardians of the Galaxy book hasn't done a lot better. And I think if you can get that one for less in the 9.8 than a Young Avengers, like, Guardians of the Galaxy number one in 2008, under $300 is, I think, a really great buy for a CGC 9.8 comic book right now. But uh, nonetheless, Young Avengers number one in the 9.8, I was wrong about. 
Okay, next one is an interesting one to talk about here. It's a Thor number five, the third print in the CGC 9.8. Yeah, I made a, a pre-order video about this one where I pre-ordered a CGC 9.8. Interesting with that pre-order. I have not received that pre-order yet from Slabbed Heroes. Uh, I gotta get in contact with them. I'm starting to like, you know, think, because certainly it's coming from the US to Canada. I've known and got used to being really patient. So hopefully it shows up anytime now, but I am about to give them a call, but uh, still giving them the benefit of the doubt. But Thor number five, the third print, it's the first full appearance of the Black Winter. And in the third print, you just get the Black Winter on the cover, looking really awesome. So I thought this one had potential, but uh, if we look on the census really quick, there's quite a few 9.8s, and some of the prices were sort of looking decent at first, but I think a few listings uh, slipping in there. Uh, we'll talk about prices, but 426 CGC 9.8s in the blue label for this third printing with the trade dress, so, uh, so not the virgin variant. 426 blue label 9.8s, 91.4% the CGC 9.8 ratio. So ex expected with a brand new book, they are pretty much going straight to CGC. So uh, Thor number five, the third print. Uh, some of these prices in the CGC 9.8, every now and then, because my pre-order was $49.99. And every now and then, uh, I think I saw one or two auctions where I think one was like $42 and I think one was even like $39 or something like that. Um, so if you're really patient on this one, you can get it a little bit um, below the pre-order price. So that's, for me, going to go down so far as me being pretty wrong on this one. Although, um, have saw an auction for this one go up to $100. Yeah, one ended at 100 even in an auction. A uh, few sort of ending in that sort of 70 to 80 range. So certainly, you know, that's probably the fair price right now for this book, about $70. Um, interesting with this one, it'll go down as me kind of being wrong on this one because it, it didn't really take off from the beginning and then in the next issue the Black Winter dies. So, um, uh, but moving forward here, I actually think this one is a good kind of cheap one to, to consider. Even in the first print, I think another thing like we're specifically talking about the third print, um, the first print cover is really cool. So I think that's a bit of a negative for this third print. Like and most people are just gonna want that first print cover with the cool looking Thor cover, um, you know, first full appearance of Black Winter. That's a bit of a negative, I think, for this book. But I actually think, um, you know, whether it's the first print or this third print in the 9.8, it's a decent time to get in there and buy now because I'm pretty sure Donny Cates is on the record as saying like the Black Winter is coming back. And it's totally like the way he dies is like he's gonna come back. Like the the, the uh, paneling and how the story was done, it's really leaves that totally open. So I think actually right now, even though I've been wrong so far, Thor number five in the third print or the first print actually too, uh, is a pretty decent buy in uh, kind of the CGC 9.8 moderns, I think right now. Okay, uh, next one here is a uh, King in the Last Padawan, number one. Yeah, so uh, this one, you know, definitely a book I sort of, I got really excited about. I do think you get the first appearance of Sabine Wren, Hira Sindala, uh, Ezra Bridger. So some big, I think, uh, first appearances that have a lot of potential moving forward to kind of be in pop culture and stuff with Disney owning Star Wars and all that. So lots of positives about this book, but I think I got a little overexcited there and I... I sort of, you know, I, I didn't really understand, I think, uh, how many of these were out there in the high grade. It being a Marvel Star Wars book, I was sort of initially kind of thought of it as, uh, you know, oh, it's such a great underfollowed one and there's not going to be a lot of 9.8s. Uh, however, as the Sabine Wren rumors that she was going to be in Mandalorian Season 2 kind of heated up, a lot of these just uh, came out of the woodwork and got graded. And now there are uh, 355 CGC 9.8s out there in the blue label. So when I first started talking about this book and thinking it was cool, there were like 40 something I remembered. Yeah, so this one's come quite a long way. 67.1%, this CGC 9.8 ratio. So not really rare in the 9.8, uh, nothing to really write home about. Similar to kind of Young Avengers number one. But uh, so Kane the Last Paddle on number one, I was really recommending this one. And I think I kind of just misjudged some of the hype that was happening for season two Mandalorian and people speculating on it. Cause I think I put it on, it was like one of our modern videos uh, to buy and hold forever kind of thing. And most of the auctions then were kind of 275 to 300 if you got a decent deal. Um, and I was thinking, hey, this is a pretty good modern, it's got a lot of potential. I still kind of think that, but um, 
since there's been a bit of a letdown, I think most people re are probably thinking Sabine Wren, although all the episodes haven't been released yet, but people aren't really thinking Wren's going to be in the season two Mandalorian anymore. So there was a bit of a letdown with this book. Uh, I got in there, admittedly, uh, I made an unbox video not too long ago where I bought mine. It was like 175-ish. Uh, in the CGC 9.8, so recommending them around 300, I ended up grabbing one at 175, just noticing the prices pulling back a lot, and there was one in Canada, so really made sense for me. Uh, interesting though with this one, uh, because that's definitely gonna go down as a mistake on my part. Yeah, I sort of recommending it during hype, like pretty much doing something that I say not to, that I really, you know, say not to on the channel is, um, you know, when there's hype for something, you just wanna be patient, and you, you know, a lot of times that hype's not permanent, it goes away, and the prices come back a little bit. And that's what happened with Kanan Last Padawan number one in the CGC 9.8. Uh, interesting though, a couple selling here in the last little bit. One had sold for $239.99. And I had a feeling that uh, when I purchased mine for you know 175 there, it just seemed like that was the perfect time where everyone got them graded and now they were all getting them back from CGC and they were flooding the market on, uh, on eBay. Um, so there were quite a few, and I, I mentioned in that video, uh, the seller I purchased this from, I noticed on the completed listings, he had sold like five already before I had bought mine. So he had must have sent like 10 or 20 to CGC and got you know, 10 9.8s back or something like that. So at that point, I felt that they were kind of flooding the market, and that's the kind of time where you can get a decent price, where there's a lot of supply. So that initial flood might be over. And I actually think, um, you know, this book for me is kind of neck and neck even with Darth Vader 3. Darth Vader 3 in the first print is the first Dr. Aphra. Definitely a high potential Star Wars, a new, new age Star Wars character. This book right in, right in with that, I believe. So uh, Darth Vader 3 is about 250, 260 in the CGC 9.8. So maybe this one at 240, 250 is pretty much, um, you know, that really makes sense, I think, in the CGC 9.8. So, yep, and uh, these uh, sort of, uh, you know, Star Wars Rebels, Clone Wars uh, heroes do have a lot of potential moving forward here. Like, Disney owns Star Wars. There's going to be Star Wars movies for the next 50 years. So, you know, uh, it's probably a decent bet that Sabine Wren or someone will uh, come out in uh, a Star Wars movie coming up here. But... Yeah, with that, recommending it at 300, it pulling back to 175, I was wrong about that, wrong on the timing, but right now, maybe if you can get one close to 200 in the 9.8, I actually would actually recommend to um, grab one if you're a Star Wars fan. Okay, next one. Is a, a Batman 567 in the CGC 9.8? Yeah, I really like this one as a Batman fan. I really, I like the cover, yeah, just grown to just like the cover a lot more. Uh, it's the first appearance of new Batgirl, Cassandra Kane. And like interesting, a bit of a negative on this issue, you do get a great cover. In the issue, like Cassandra Cain, she's kind of like a young girl and she's basically, she doesn't get in the Batgirl costume. Like she doesn't fight crime or look really cool in this that much, uh, which is a bit of a negative, but definitely her first appearance. Um, so uh, Batman 567 though was, is a Batman book I like in the late 90s. It's pretty decently rare in the CGC 9.8, but yeah, it hasn't really done anything in the pricing, to be honest, whereas most 9.8s have done quite well. Uh, so 186 CGC 9.8s out there in the blue label. So I do like, yeah, not very many of them. A one of 186 is pretty great as a collector item for a Batman fan. 31.3%, the CGC 9.8 ratio. So 1999 book, that's not bad at all. Yeah, 31.3%, like it's not, anything to pay up for and it's extremely rare in the 9.8 or anything but um, a decent rarity and I've always liked that about this book so Batman 567 uh, talking about prices because um, I had purchased mine about a year ago it's probably even over a year ago for just over $200 in an auction too so that was like the fair value for sure then um, you know since then I've saw an auction it was like 150 something um, I saw 170s auctions, and a lot of, certainly a lot of CDC 9.8s have heated up in the last six months here. This one hasn't really, although recently one had sold for 225 online, so that's probably the higher end of fair value, 170 to 180 lower end of fair value is still doable. Yeah, I think an auction uh, about a, a month ago ended around in the 170s for this one. So uh, yeah, I pretty much have been pretty wrong on this one. The price hasn't done much at all. 
But actually, as a Batman fan, I do just enjoy having this cover and uh, a one of 186 with a decent rarity in the 9.8. First new Batgirl. Um, another thing too, like the, um, what was it? That Birds of Prey movie where I think, Cass I hadn't seen it to be honest, but I think Cassandra Cain was kind of a kid in that movie. So a mi very minor appearance in that movie. So maybe there's like a bit of a lull because that movie didn't do very good. But I think moving forward, like a Cassandra Cain Batgirl um, would be awesome, I think. Yeah, like if, if, if she was growing up in a movie kicking ass, like that would be really cool. So still some uh, potential for this one. And uh, yeah, I'll still go down as recommending it. Even though I've kind of been wrong, it's been basically about the same price, let's call it, since I've purchased mine and I've definitely made a couple videos recommending it. But still one, I think, right now, if you can get it for closer to 170, let's call it in the CGC 9.8, I think that man, 567 is a cool one, absolutely. Okay, uh, last two here we'll talk about. So um, yeah, big key here, it's an Edge of Spider-Verse number two. Yeah, this is one that, um, you know, I've definitely been wrong about it because, and you know, it's, it's almost uh, similar to Young Avengers number one. Like I realize it's a really cool book, but there's another book that I prefer over it and I would rather people kind of spend their money on that book kind of thing. Uh, Cause Edge of Spider-Verse number two, um, it really surprised by some of the pricing I was seeing this morning. It's still pretty much neck and neck with Ultimate Fallout number four, the first Miles Morales. So this one's the first Spider-Gwen, new Spider-Woman. Uh, but uh, on the census, 2,319 CGC 9.8. So this neck and neck with uh, Ultimate Fallout 4, like the most popular modern book, pretty much. Uh, a lot of them out there, 2,319 in the 9.8. 57.2% uh, the CGC 9.8 ratio. So of all graded copies, 57.2% of them are 9.8s. Whereas with Ultimate Fallout 4, it's 31% uh, of them, I think it is. Um, our CGC 9.8, so a better rarity in the Ultimate Fallout 4. I think there's a little bit less in the 9.8 too. I think it might be like 2100 or something like that for Ultimate Fallout 4, but a little bit more rare with Ultimate Fallout 4. So I always thought Ultimate Fallout 4 deserved to be a bit like, like a higher price basically. And uh, for a while there, it seemed like Edge of Spider-Verse was maybe even a little bit more in the, in the 9.8. When I had purchased my Ultimate Fallout 4, which was about $355 over about a year and a half ago, uh, these Edge of Spider Verses 2 were about 400 to 450, you know, a little bit more than the, and I thought that didn't make sense given that Ultimate Fallout 4 was more rare in the 9.8. So, but um, Edge of Spider Verse 2, I've, in the 9.8, I've certainly been wrong on because it has appreciated in price almost as much as Ultimate Fallout 4. So, having a look at some of the completed listings, uh, one for, I think the price range is like, there was one for 865 that had sold in an auction in the past couple weeks here, but a couple selling for over a thousand dollars still. So this is still kind of neck and neck in price with Ultimate Fallout 4. Um, certainly I've been wrong, it's, you know, back then when I purchased my Ultimate Fallout 4, this was about 400 to 450. Now it's 865 to a thousand. Um, you know, I'd still, with Ultimate Fallout 4, I think if you're patient in an auction, you can kind of get that one around, let's call it 925 or, you know, 900 to 950, let's call it. Um, still about the same price as the Edge of Spider-Verse number two. I'd prefer an Ultimate Fallout 4 still, but definitely go down as one I was wrong about. It, it, it's a great book. I mean, it's just, they're such a comparable book with uh, them being sort of the in, uh, in that whole Into the Spider-Verse uh, storyline and new Spider-Woman, uh, who's pretty much the new Spider-Man in an alternate universe though. So they, they're really like first appearances of new Spider-Mans, absolutely. But with Ultimate Fallout 4 being a little more rare, um, I still think it's the better buy now, but have definitely been wrong so far. But yeah, I mean, if you're the biggest Spider-Gwen fan, it's the book to get. So, you know, it's if you, you want it, it's the one to recommend, but uh, if you're maybe trying to be a little bit more selective, I do like Ultimate Fallout 4 in the 9.8 a little bit better. Okay, uh, last book on the list here. Yeah, of uh, some CGC 9.8s I was wrong about. Uh, we got a uh, Marvel Superhero Secret Wars number eight here. Yeah, this is a really cool book, I think. And, you know, I've always sort of as a, you know, someone that focuses on the 9.8s and tries to be a little more selective, I always liked another book besides this one. So. Yeah, this will go down as one I was wrong about. I know a lot of people on the team were kind of picking this one up and I was pretty tempted to for sure. But um, 
with a uh, secret word number eight in the 9.8. On the census, there's 3,680 of them in the 9.8. That's a lot for an 80s book. That's just so much. So this one's not rare at all. This one will certainly be flooding the market when Venom 2 comes out, absolutely. 27.9%, uh, the CGC 9.8 ratio. Yeah, and for an 80s book, that's not particularly good, uh, especially when you compare it to like other black costume Spidey books um, that are much more rare in the 9.8 and more collectible. And that's that's where I kind of stand on this one, because definitely Secret Wars number eight, great cover, origin of the symbiote. You know, you want the origin of the symbiote that becomes Venom, like for sure. Uh, but uh, being a bit of a selective 9.8 collector, I much prefer Amazing Spider-Man 252 in the CGC 9.8. Um, so yeah, if we talk about it, and 52, 252 in the 9.8 is more rare in the 9.8 by a long shot. It's like a 10% 9.8 ratio. And there's about 1,200 of them, I think, in the 9.8, as opposed to 3,600. <laughs> so Amazing Spider-Man 252 in the 9.8 is an overall better book, always was, I thought. Uh, so for Secret Wars right now, uh, the prices, uh, right around 400 uh, to I would say 450. Uh, one auction went for 415. I actually saw on eBay just recently. This one may be cooling off a little bit, uh, where I think some were selling for 500, and that just really surprised me. But uh, yeah, 415 one in an auction going for. But um, yeah, definitely gonna go down is one that I was wrong on because. Um, uh, Secret Wars number eight. I know some people on the team a year ago bought this one for two hundred dollars. Yeah, and I think a decent deal was two twenty-five. Uh, maybe someone would pay like two thirty to two forty for one, but uh, that was pretty much the high of the prices. So to see this one go up, I was you know now it's four over four hundred. I'm definitely wrong about this one, but given that you know the rarity is not that good, I do think this one might be the one to pull back a little bit more when the Venom two movie comes out. Whereas, um, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 252, as I mentioned there, uh, first appearance of the black costume, Amazing Fantasy 15 cover homage, uh, I think is just a better book. And with uh, 415 bucks, that's serious money. Amazing Spider-Man 252 in the 9.8 is about 900 now, um, I think is about the fair value. So I would take that 400, you know, put it toward an Amazing Spider-Man 252, maybe save up a little bit more and just go for that book. because. Uh, that one I think is a really good long-term one and uh, likely after the Venom 2 movie, yeah, maybe it'll pull back a little bit because there won't be as much Venom promotion and people won't be as excited like a year after the Venom 2 movie, but um, I have a feeling it'll hold up a little bit better than a Secret Wars number eight. But uh, Secret Wars number eight has done pretty well in price in the last six to 12 months, so one that goes down that I was wrong about. Okay, uh, yeah, that's uh, six there that, uh, you know, I was wrong about. And uh, yeah, good to just, because still some of them I th think are pretty decent buys. Yeah, so, uh, you know, you know, I've been maybe wrong so far, but it might be an opportunity to get in there on a pullback. And certainly in a couple of those other books there, some other options I still think are really good options in the 9.8 because they're a lot more rare than those other books. Um, yeah, when we did those comparisons in the CGC 9.8 specifically too. Certainly if you're a big uh, CGC 9.8 collector like me. Okay, uh, that'll be all for today. I'll have a, the full quick list in the description below, but uh, yeah, just concluding up here, definitely worth it to, uh, you know, think of some times where I was a bit wrong and, uh, you know, uh, uh, try to learn from why I was wrong and um, just try to make better decisions moving forward. Yeah, whether it's like 9.8 collecting or in the stock market, or even in your life. Like just, you wanna learn from your mistakes and moving forward, try not to make them. Uh, so yeah, pretty, a bit of a different video, I think. Normally I'm just uh, talking about all the ones I really love, but um, definitely worthwhile. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you got some ideas. But if you haven't already too, I would invite you to join the team and subscribe to Team CGC 9.8. Yeah, I'd love to have you on our comic book collecting and comic book investing team. Hit the bell for all the latest notifications. Add me on Instagram and Twitter as well, all the links in the description below. Okay, so um, yeah, we'll um, be back tomorrow. I believe I'm probably going to do uh, the uh, $500 budget video tomorrow. I believe it is, yeah, we did the 400. Do a 500 budget video tomorrow. But thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate the support. And uh, if you did have any questions, mention me on Instagram. Probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. Thanks again for watching though, and I'll see you on the next one.